everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be doing another rant video about boarding school. Okay, so today's video is going to be another rant video about how boarding school was like kid jail. And I don't like to do rant videos on my channel, but I think it's important to speak out about this issue. Um, Paris Hilton has spoken out about it, I've spoken out about it in a previous video, and I hope other people who went through the same thing will speak out about it as well. So anyway, um, today I'll be explaining how when I went to boarding school in the late 90s to the early 2000s, it was like a jail for kids. And um, I'm going to be referring to it as kid jail, even though apparently there's a difference between prison and jail because one time at work, at lunch, my friend and I, um, my co-worker, were talking about boarding school because he went there as well, and he described it as kid jail. And I thought that was very accurate, so for this video we'll be referring to boarding school as kid jail. So I went online and I decided to do some research about jail and prison because I've never been to jail or prison and I hope I never go to jail or prison and the extent of my experience with the law is finding a lost wallet on the ground and then taking it to the police station so that they could return it to the owner. Um, I've never even had a parking ticket or a speeding ticket so I went online and I researched what it's like in jail and prison and I read people's um, things that they wrote, people who actually have been in jail and prison and as I was researching I thought okay yep yeah, that sounds like boarding school, this sounds like boarding school um, but the more I read I started to think wait a minute why are the cells in jail and prison bigger than the cubicles we lived in at boarding school um, but I'm getting ahead of myself um, I have all my points written down here in front of me and I'm gonna go through them one by one hopefully this video will not be too long if it is I'll have to split it up into um, maybe two different parts but Let's just get into the video. Okay, so I went to boarding school, as I said, in the late 90s to the early 2000s, and back then it really was like a kid jail. I've heard they've made some improvements since I was there, but I feel like there's a long way to go still. So let's just go through the points um, about the similarities between boarding school and kid jail. Alright, so as I was reading people's experiences about being in jail, um, the first thing that came up was that they felt like they had no escape and nowhere to go and had a lot, like a sense of a loss of freedom and abandonment and that is very true of boarding school. Um, I'd say like 98% of us were sent to boarding school against our will. We didn't want to be there. We were just unlucky enough to be born into abusive families that sent us there because they didn't want to deal with us. Um, so yeah, there, there were kids there that had behavioral problems and also kids that needed to be there because they lived out in the middle of nowhere where there was no school for them and their parents couldn't homeschool them so they had to be sent to boarding school. And you know, there were also those who actually wanted to be there, you know, the extroverts who thought it was just like a endless sleepover with their friends. but. I'd say like 98% of us did not want to be there and were there against our will. And yeah, the sense of abandonment was very real because I remember every year the new girls would come in and they'd be really upset and start crying and you know, they would feel abandoned. But also um, I read that in jail slash prison, there's not a lot of camaraderie either, and that's the same thing for boarding school. Even if 
even though we were in the same situation, we kind of didn't band together. We were just like, oh, you know what? I've been here for a year longer than you. You're not gonna like it, but you'll get used to it. And that's how we dealt with things. Um, not healthy at all, but we didn't have anyone to go to. We didn't have adults that we trusted or anything, and we didn't go to each other. So that's the first thing, a uh, sense of abandonment and also your loss of freedom. We were not allowed to just do whatever we wanted. There were a lot of rules and regulations, like we were only allowed to leave the grounds for two hours at a time, twice a week. So we couldn't just, you know, leave and have a walk around the neighborhood or anything like that. Uh, I know how, like maybe all of you would understand now after lockdown happened in 2020, what that feels like. Even if you live in a huge area, like the school was quite large, but you weren't allowed to leave the grounds. So you still felt really trapped and just like, I don't know, it's very frustrating. And, you know, even big celebrities like Ellen struggled with lockdown, even though she lives in this huge mansion. So yeah, it, it was just like this feeling of being trapped and not being able to do what you wanted. Uh, so yeah, it was pretty traumatizing. Um, you had nowhere to go, no escape. Like that's just how you felt. Um, yeah, so that's the first point I wanted to make. Okay, the second point I'm gonna talk about is the living conditions. Uh, so in jail, uh, you get like bars on your cell and stuff and in boarding school, we lived in these cubicles, which we referred to as cubes, and they were these tiny cubicles. They were four wooden walls and a curtain, not even a door, and if you were lucky enough to get a window, there were bars on that window, and like, I understand we were minors and we had to be get safe and all that, um, but I think there are better ways than putting bars on the window so it looks like a prison. Uh, so hopefully they changed that. But yeah, they said it was to keep other people out, but really it was to keep us in so we couldn't escape. Uh, so yeah, they, they were really tiny. They were the width of a doorway and then the length, about the length of a single bed, they had a built-in shelf and cupboard for your stuff and it was just so claustrophobic. And yeah, I read like some people in prison don't feel that sense of claustrophobia, but I definitely did in boarding school because it, it was just too small an area to live in. And also we had no privacy, there was no door, there was just a curtain and the curtain was see-through, like it wasn't pla like clear plastic, it was a printed pattern but it was see-through, like you could see through it so no privacy and anyone could just like come along and rip open the curtain at any time, even when you were changing and stuff and um, some of the girls would have older or younger brothers come to visit them and they would just like run around ripping open these curtains. Uh, it was just disgusting and you know we, we would complain to the house mothers who were like the adults who looked after us at boarding school and they wouldn't do anything about it because they said oh it's fine they're related to someone in the boarding house. <laughs> so yeah sexual harassment was a thing um, back then in the boarding house. I hope it's not now. Uh, so yeah, very tiny living arrangements. Hopefully they fixed that. Um, I hear now that when you're 16 you will get your own room. Hopefully that's like a proper room with a door and privacy, but who knows. Okay, the next thing is... Um, Oh, there's a lot of things to go through. Uh, let's see, let's go with uh, the food. The food was really bad and I've read that prison food and jail food is bad as well. Uh, so yeah, like it's so bad the students would buy two-minute noodles and eat those before dinner 
So they had to ban two-minute noodles so that the kids would actually eat the food they were being served at the dining hall. And how I know the food is really bad is that in grade 11, you had to help out in the kitchen, so you had to serve the food. And what they would do is they would, on Monday, they would have cauliflower, and it would be normal cauliflower color. But then on Tuesday, they would get that same cauliflower that wasn't eaten because it was gross, and they would dye it a different color. So they'd dye it like blue or purple and then serve it again. And they did this for the entire week. So they just keep dyeing the cauliflower different colors, I guess trying to get us to eat it, but we wouldn't because it was so disgusting. So yeah, that was just gross and like probably not great for our health, but we didn't eat it anyway. So yeah, really bad food. And I heard in prison jail, you can get commissary, which I guess is like where you can buy food that's not being served. Um, so we kind of had the same thing. So as I mentioned before, we were only allowed to leave the grounds twice a week. So on Wednesday afternoons and on Sunday, no, Saturday mornings, we could leave for two hours at a time to go across the street and buy food from the supermarket. So that was kind of like our commissary. Um, so yeah, but you were only allowed to go to the supermarket. You were not allowed to go anywhere else. Like you couldn't go to the news agency or the pet store or the food court or anything like that. You could only go to the supermarket. And um, uh, the next point I'm gonna make is that we had to wear uniforms. So I guess, I think some prisons you have to wear like prison uniforms, but when we went out to our commissary, we had to be in our school uniforms. So, and I'm talking like full on hats, blazers, stockings, full on uniforms, even in the 40 degree Australian heat in the summer, because this was in Queensland. And you know, some girls did get heat stroke from that. Um, but yeah, and also, there was a lot of spying and reporting because we were in our uniforms and if people in the town saw us going anywhere else but the supermarket, they would report it to the school because I guess they had nothing better to do. Um, so yeah, you couldn't just go to like a coffee shop after school anytime you wanted to study or anything like that. I really hope they have changed that. Um, so yeah, we were only allowed to go to the supermarket twice a week on Wednesday afternoons and on Saturday mornings and we had to wear our uniform. So yeah, that was just very restricting and I really hope they have changed those rules. Okay, the next thing I read about prison slash jail is that you do a lot of work um, and it's the same in boarding school. Even though there were kids as young as eight years old there, like we were about eight to 17, um, you had to do all the chores. So like you had to sweep, you had to do laundry, you had to do vacuuming, all that, basically everything you do as an adult, you had like this list of chores and your name would be put down next to which chore was yours during that week. You had to take out the rubbish, do the recycling, blah, 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 all that. Um, and because we were kids, like, we didn't really do it properly, like, cleaning the bathrooms. The bathrooms were, like, in stalls, so there were stalls of toilets on one side and then stalls of, um, showers on the other side, so I'm guessing it's similar in prison or like a military barracks where you just have those rows of toilets and showers and they were so disgusting that you had to wear flip-flops um, when you had a shower so you wouldn't get all these diseases and I've heard it's like I read and heard it's the same thing in prison and jail so yeah <laughs> another similarity there okay this next thing is one thing I really hated about boarding school is that you did not get 
two clean sheets a week, you only got one clean sheet. So what they would make you do is that you had two sheets on your bed, the bottom sheet and the top sheet. And every week they would give you one new clean sheet and you would put the top sheet into the laundry and wash it. But the bottom sheet, which was dirty and disgusting because no one took their job seriously and you know they would track in everyone you were living with 200 girls so they would track in all this dirt and disgusting stuff and it would just get into your bed and into your sheet so that bottom sheet was disgusting and you had to use that bottom sheet as your top sheet for the next week so we did not get clean bedding every week. We had to use the dirty bedding as the top sheet and then we would get a new clean sheet the next week and I hated that so much. It was so gross. Um, so yeah, gross. I really hope that you get proper clean bedding every week at boarding school these days. All right, so the next thing is parentification. And I've read this like different levels of that and it is abuse. So um, the way what happened to us is that we had to take the the older kids had to take the younger kids to medical appointments. And I've talked about this in my other video before, like when I broke my nose when I was 12, a 16 year old girl had to take me to the doctor and um, when I was 12, I thought she was like so grown up and amazing, taking me to my medical appointment. But then when I was 16 and it was my turn to take um, these two 12 year old twins to the doctor, I did not feel prepared for it at all. Like I thought I was way too young to be responsible for these two other kids um, for a medical appointment. And yeah, they don't brief you or explain anything to you. They just say, okay, it's your turn to take these kids to the doctor. So what I had to do is I took these twins to get their vaccinations at the doctor. And one of the twins was just terrified of needles, like fainting, crying, all that stuff. She was terrified. And because we had no adults there, I was the one who had to like comfort her and try to calm her down and you know I'm not a monster so I tried to distract her and I, I like asked her about her hobbies, what she liked to do, you know just talking to her so that she wouldn't see the needle going into her arm so she wouldn't faint and all that stuff. The other twin was fine <laughs> um, but I feel like I shouldn't have been put into that position like I don't know, like, and the other girl who took me to the doctor when I broke my nose, she should not have been put into that position either. Like, I think none of us should have re been responsible for other minors for medical appointments. Like, you have a chaperone when you go on a school excursion or you go, like, overseas on exchange, so why not have an adult chaperone when taking the kids at boarding school to medical appointments. It makes no sense that we had to do that because we were also minors. Um, but yeah, that's one thing I really hated as well and I hope it doesn't happen now. Alright, the next thing I'm going to talk about are um, the fire blankets. Okay, there's a lot of dangerous things that happen in boarding school as well. I don't think the same kind of things happen in prison or jail, but maybe it is dangerous, I don't know. Um, but like I explained in my other video, the first boarding school I stayed at, there was no wall on the second floor, so people and things could fall off onto the first floor, which was really dangerous. Um, but another thing that was dangerous was that we had these fire blankets, but these blankets would actually catch on fire if there was a fire. Like we read the little tags on the blankets and that's what it said, which is extremely dangerous. And luckily there were no fires um, at the boarding school when I was there. There was just like fire drills. But if there was an actual fire, we would have been dead or seriously injured because of these fire blankets and I really, really hope they have changed those now. And um, yeah, because we were locked in the boarding house at night and there were bars on the windows, 
there'd be no way to escape a fire because we'd have to rely on the person to unlock the boarding house. So I really hope they have improved their fire alarm protocols. Uh, yeah, so another thing that's bad about boarding school, it was dangerous for kids. Alright, so, <laughs> uh, what else? There was also like a sick bay, which I'm guessing was like, again, similar to military barracks. Um, so there was like a uh, kind of a room with like rows of beds for people who were sick at the boarding school. But the nurse wouldn't let you stay there unless you were like almost dying. So I don't think they were very good. Like I remember one time I was really, really sick, like fever, chills, sore throat, everything. And I was so bad that the English teacher noticed how sick I was. And she's like, oh, you should go to the nurse. And I'm like, no, if I go to the nurse, she won't do anything. <laughs> but the teacher insisted. So I went to see the nurse. And um, like I said, the nurse like took my temperature, everything, and she's like, oh, you're fine. Just take these strepsils and go back to class. So that's what I did. Um, and the teacher didn't say anything because I guess there was nothing else she could do. And then the next day I was even more sick and like, it was just so bad. I decided to go back to the nurse. And uh, she took my temperature again, and then this time she was like, oh, why didn't you tell me you were this sick? And I'm like, I came here yesterday, and you just sent me back to class. Yeah, the, <laughs> it was ridiculous. Anyway, she let me stay in the sick bay for about two hours, um, but I was so sick that I couldn't sleep, so it didn't really do anything. Um, she didn't give me any medication or anything like that, and uh, the rule was, when you left the sick bay, you had to change the sheets in your bed. So there's like all these like really sick girls trying to change the bedding, which is just ridiculous. And like, I get it, you know, we were in the bed, we have to change the bedding, but we're sick. And I remember like the day girls, um, those are the girls who went to school during the day and then went home after school. Um, they would like tell these stories about how their parents, their mom or their dad would like, you know, pamper them and bring all this stuff to them in bed while they were sick, like medication, soup, <laughs> um, magazines, like all these things and like actually take care of them. And we were like, wow, that is so different to what we experienced at boarding school. Uh, but yeah, um, so that's another thing. Uh, okay, the other thing that happens in prisons and jail and boarding school is that it's just super noisy all the time, so you can't sleep. Like, if you think about it, you're living with 200 other girls who are like teens, preteens, because as I said, there were kids as young as eight there, so like eight to 17, and they're just like running around yelling all the time, and it's just so noisy. And you know, you, you have a lack of sleep, You um, it affects you when you go to school. Sometimes they have fire alarms at 3 a.m., so it, that wakes you up, and then you're outside in the cold for a few hours. So you have a lot of interrupted sleep, and it does really affect you. I guess it's kind of like sleep torture. So yeah, it's just noisy and terrible, and an introvert's nightmare. Okay, so um, I think we've talked about most of the things on my list. Another thing um, is that you have set times for things like eating and uh, yeah, so in prison and jail you have set times for lunch, breakfast, dinner I guess, and it's the same at boarding school, like you, and you have to go to meal times. If you don't go, they'll write you down um, and force you to go. So uh, yeah, that's just like another way of taking taking away your freedom. So I, again, I hated that. And we had like set tables that we had to sit at. So like from Monday to Thursday, we had these tables that we had to sit at. And you know, I guess it was to try and get us to mingle with the other grades because there'd be someone from grade eight to grade 12 on the table. 
Um, and then on the weekends you could like sit with your friends, but again, like they would spy on you. Like if you didn't eat enough, they would write your name down because I, I guess there were eating disorders, I'm sure there were eating disorders amongst the girls, but uh, the way they did it was just ridiculous. Like, so sometimes you could go out, um, so if like a day girl signed you out and took you out to dinner, you could do that um, maybe once or twice in the semester. And then because you had already eaten, they'd, they'd bring you back like in the middle of dinner um, before homework time. So. But because you had already eaten, you wouldn't want to eat anything at dinner and, you know, because you weren't eating anything, they would write your name down for, like, on the eating disorder list, even though you would explain to them, like, my friend signed me out and I've already had dinner, they, they wouldn't believe you and then you'd be on this list and then they'd just spy on you all the time and being watched all the time is just really frustrating and it just drives you crazy so yeah that's another thing that happened okay so i think i've gone through pretty much everything on my list um i'm sure there's like a lot of other things that other people can talk about i hope they do talk about it because it really was like kid jail like you were abandoned you had this like sense of being locked up with no escape there were bad things going on and I haven't even scratched the surface of what went on so if you want to know more about the really terrible things that happened at boarding school because I don't want to get my channel like banned or anything because I just started this channel but if you want to know about the really terrible things that happened I recommend listening to a podcast or reading about the White House Boys and I will warn you, there is a lot of terrible, horrible things that happened there, like, yeah, people died um, because of the abuse. So I'm just warning you, if you do decide to go down that rabbit hole, um, and the one of the most terrible things is, I think, is that the people responsible still won't admit to what they did. Like, I listened to a podcast about it and you could just tell the people were lying, they did not want to admit what they had done and it was so obvious, but it's just so frustrating when you've been through something similar and it happens like all the time. This happens all over the world. It's not just, you know, in China or in Australia, it's everywhere. And these people refuse to take responsibility for what they did to us. And it's just so frustrating because you can tell they're obviously lying, but they still won't admit it. And I think that's very common for abusers. But anyway, uh, that's the video for today. I hope I covered a lot of things in this video. Uh, I didn't go too deep into the really bad things, um, like I said, but hopefully this video gets out there because there were things that were dangerous that happened that I hope have not happened now, that they've changed. and. You know, there were things like going on like parentification that shouldn't happen either. So I just really hope this video gets out there and that things change or have changed. But I think there's still a long way to go. So hopefully uh, boarding schools will improve and not be so terrible because sometimes kids have to be there like like I said you know the kids that live in the middle of nowhere that have no schools and the parents can't homeschool them have to go to boarding school so I just hope that it will be a more pleasant experience um, and not so much like jail or prison for kids but yeah uh, that's the video for today. I hope I won't have to do any more ranch videos like this for a long time or ever again because I do like to try and keep this channel more positive 
and I do a lot of drawing and bullet journaling videos because that's one way um, for me to cope with what happened to me. So the next video will be more like my normal content and yeah, um, please share this video and get it out there because boarding schools really need to change and improve. Okay, I'll, I'll see you guys later. Bye.